Welcome to the Rock Church and World Outreach Center podcast. We hope that this message will strengthen and encourage you. Now here's a word from one of our special guests. Come on, guys, let's give a big round of applause to our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, turn to someone, give five, and please be seated. It's a good Sunday night. You are in church. You are real Christians, you know that? If you come to church twice, I mean, come on. Are you agree with me? God is doing amazing stuff. Listen, I believe, I believe I was standing there and worshiping God with you guys and I believe God spoke to me and he said this church is on the edge of big revival I believe li- listen I believe this I don't say it often seriously I don't prophesy in different churches I'm okay to prophesy in my own church to my own people but I believe this church is, is in the edge of a great and big revival so you guys you guys just be ready come on guys just be ready turn to someone and say just be ready because it's coming be ready because it's coming i'm gonna speak about revival tonight because i believe many of us we need our personal revival in our lives and you know what i i was thinking about this about a couple of a few months ago when um uh, when, uh, you, you know, we had this uh, Hillsong Conference and Hillsong Conference in Australia, they had this motto, like a slogan, it goes like this, this is revival, this is revival. And they were showing uh, this big advertisement for the conference and they were showing some things like revivals from the past. You guys had your revivals in the past in America, in Europe, somewhere. And you know what? We are Hillsong Church. And being a pastor of Hillsong Church, we are following the same visions, same thoughts, same passion, and same revival. On the, and of course, we translate everything, like we are singing Hillsong songs, and uh, you know, we are pirate in country, so we just pirate everything we copy everything hallelujah we have this law called copyright which means a right to copy that's that's how we read it come on somebody and you know what um few months ago when we showed this to our people this is revival and i believe um you know in australia they were showing these big revivals from the past Revivals like with Billy Graham. And you know, at that advertisement, it says, this reminds us of the glorious revival in the past. And you know what, being a Hillsong church, we take the same advertisement because we want to, people to be encouraged what's happening in Australia, what's happening in Europe. And I remember I was showing this big revival. Have you seen those revivals? Like with Billy Graham, with hundreds of thousands of people, like Reinhard Bonke, hundreds of thousands of people. And I remember I brought this video to our church, to Kiev. And you need to understand, back in Australia, when they were showing those big revivals, people were cheering up, they were clapping, they were so, uh, you know, so happy to see those revivals. When I saw this, when I showed this in Kiev, like no reaction. Like nothing. And I was sitting there and I thought to myself, when we are talking revival, It is so natural for you guys to understand those things because you guys had your own revivals. You understand what revival is, but for us, it is such an, uh, you know, foreign um, thing for our country and for our people. And when I saw that our people, no reaction, because, you know, it says, it reminds us of the glorious revivals, and our, city, our people were sitting there, it doesn't remind me anything. <laughs> because in our land, we never had revival. Yes, we are Christian culture, and you know what, a thousand years ago, 
exactly 1025 years in the year of 989 Christianity came to our land and to our country and at that day the whole city of Kiev was baptized in the water I'm calling this revival come on someone can you imagine the whole city would be baptized in the water like Think about San Bernardino. Whole city would be baptized in the water in one day. That, that's revival I'm talking about. And I started to think about it. How can I explain about revival to our people? As a pastor, I want to have revival. I want to have awakening. I want to have a move of God in our church. But to be honest with you, I did not know how to explain this to our people. Maybe you are sitting here in this auditorium and maybe you are new to church. You never heard about those revivals from the past. So this message may be for you. Because we, for some of us, we are living like in a Christian bubble sometime. We are talking about guys like Reinhard Bonke and you are sitting there and you are thinking, who is Reinhard Bonke? Is he some kind of, you know, some biologist or something like that? No, no, no. We need to know about revival ourselves. And Bible would be the best answer for me how to have revival for my own people, for my own church, come on somebody, for my own country. And I found two stories. One of them in the Old Testament and one of them in the New Testament. One story about the guy named Jacob. One man went somewhere and somehow in some place went to sleep. But when he was awake, he did, did not just awake physically, but he was awake different person. Let's read together from Genesis chapter 8, verse 10. It says this, Now Jacob went out from Beersheba and went towards Haran. So he came to a certain place, come on, say with me, certain place. He came to a certain place and stayed there all night because the sun had set. Come on, repeat with me. Because the sun had set. And he took one of the stones of that place and put at his head. I don't know how can you put the, the, the stones in your head, but you, you, you know, that's, that's English here. And he lay down in that place to sleep. Then he dreamed, and behold, a ladder was set up on the earth, and its top reached to heaven. And there, are the, and there is the angels of the Lord were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and God of Isaac, and so on and so on. on. Let's jump to verse 16. Then Jacob a walk from his sleep. Can I ask you to repeat with me? A walk from his sleep. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place. Oh, I love these guys. Surely the Lord is in this place. And I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. Then Jacob rose early in the morning and took the stone that he had put at his head, set it up as a pillar and poured oil on the top of it. And he called the name of that place Bethel. But the name of that city had been loose previously. Then Jacob made a vow and said, if God will be with me and keep me in this way that I am going and give me bread to eat and clothing to put on so that I come back to my father's house in peace, then the Lord shall be my God. And this stone which I have set as a pillar shall be God's house. And of all that you give me, I will surely give a tenth 
to you. That's one story. Now turn with me to Luke chapter 9. There is another story about three guys in the Bible, three disciples, Peter, John, and James. And Jesus took Peter, John, and James to the mountain to pray. And the Bible is saying that Moses and Elijah were talking to Jesus. But those three guys were sleeping with a heavy sleep. And it says in Luke chapter 9, verse 32, it says this. Now Peter and they that were with him were heavy with sleep. But when they were fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men that stood with him. I want you guys to repeat with me. But when they were fully awake, they saw. Come on, one more time. But when they were fully awake, they saw. The title of my message tonight, when you are fully awake, you will see. Come on, guys. When you are fully awake, you will see. See, those three guys, they were heavy with sleep. But when they were fully awake, Bible said, they saw Jesus and all his glory. I believe in order for us to have revival in our lives, we just need to be fully awake in our lives. We just need to be awake. We don't need to sleep anymore. We need to be awake to see all God's glory in our lives. In the first story, Jacob came to a certain place. I want to talk a little bit about that story. He came to a certain place, nothing special, just the place. He stopped there because the Bible says it was late and he was tired. Now listen to me. It was not because God has put a spiritual GPS into Jacob to bring him to the place of revival. Are you following me? It, it was not like God has put GPS and he said 500 miles to destination. 400 miles to this and Jacob get more excited and more excited and more excited you know one mile to destination and Jacob is like I cannot wait to for to come to the place of revival no 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 it was not like that he came to that place simply because it was late and he was tired but can I say straight into your face you don't have to chase God in the specific places because real revival starts within you, not around you. Come on, church. Come on. Real revival starts within you, not around you. I believe God is moving today all over the earth. He moves in the big churches and I believe he moves in the small churches. But sometimes people need to be awake and start notice God in the place where you are right now. Sometimes people, are, you know, they are running for the place of revival. Stop running. Because real revival starts not around you. It starts in you. That's what I believe. I believe that. When Jacob had his own awakening, he changed his attitude towards that place. That is why I believe you can go to the small village and start revival in a small village. Because real revival starts within you. And guess what? You bring that revival with you to the small village. Some people there run into the place. Oh, revival is here. They come here. Now, revival is here. They come here. Stop running. Make sure that you have revival inside of you, not around you. Come on. You know, people say, well, I cannot feel God in this place anymore. Have you heard those? I cannot feel God. I'm going to go to another church. I don't feel God in this place. Here is the problem. Wherever you go, you bring yourself. Come on. 
if you don't feel revival in this place, there is no guarantee you will feel revival in that place. You know what? You can have Joyce Meyer and Wright Harbonke and Benny Heen and Pastor Brian Houston and Pastor Jim Cabre and Pastor Zhenia Kasevich and, and Jesus Christ himself lay their hands on your head. But listen to me, if you don't have revival inside of you, that's not going to change anything in your own life. Make sure you have your personal revival. When they were fully awake, they saw my point number one, my thought number one for tonight. When you are fully awake for God's revival, place does not matter. Are you with me, church? Place does not matter. Sometimes people change place. They change church. They change gathering. Because they are looking for revival in a certain places. Listen, if I believe that revival depends on a certain place, but not on the condition of my own heart, I will look for revival everywhere and I'm not going to find it in my life. Place is not important. The inner condition of your heart, that's what's important. That's what's important. Uh, this, this lady came to Jesus once and... Uh, uh, and you know, you remember the story about Jesus and Samaritan woman and uh, uh, you know, she, he said, give me this water to drink and, uh, um, and Jesus was telling her the story of her life and she had five husbands and husband number six is not her husband and uh, uh, Jesus started to, uh, to talk about the living water and she said, go and bring your husband uh, right now and she said, well, I don't have a husband and she said, it, it's true and it goes like this. And she said, oh, so you are the prophet. Well, tell me this. Our ancestors were worshiping God at this mountain. But you Jews insist that Jerusalem is the only place for worship. Come on, say with me, only place. Only place for worship, right? And Jesus said, believe me, woman, the time is coming when you Samaritans will worship the Father neither here at this mountain, not there in Jerusalem. You worship guessing in the dark. We Jews worship in the clear light of a day. God's way of salvation is made available through the Jews. And listen to this. But time is coming. Come on, somebody. But time is coming. It has, in fact, come when what you are called will not matter and where would you go to worship will not matter places not matter what's happening inside of your heart that's what matter in your own life would you agree with me come on let's give it up for jesus one more time in this order i am praying i am praying that you would have such a revival in your own heart that wherever you go you bring your revival with you wherever you go you bring revival with you. Can I honestly say? Well, I've been honest all day today. Hey? <laughs> <laughs> Sometime on my day off, I would go to those beautiful cathedrals, Orthodox churches, Catholic churches. There are so many of them in Kiev. And my people would, would find out that sometime I would go to the Orthodox Church and they would say, how can you go to the Orthodox Church? It's a dead religious place. And I'm like, I don't know. But then when I'm going there, I feel God in that place. Because the God which I feel, I bring inside of me. It's not around me. I bring it with me to that place. So wherever you go, you bring God in that place. Just go, don't go to the nightclub, okay? <laughs> I feel God in me, I'm gonna go to the nightclub. No, 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 it doesn't work that way. <laughs> Jesus said, it, it doesn't matter how you're gonna be called. You can be called Catholics, Orthodox, Protestants. It doesn't matter how, you be, how you're going to be called. The, what the matter is that you need revival inside of you. You need revival inside of you. Uh, I don't know how much you know about Hillsong Church, but you know, we, we have a churches in big cities. Like 
like you know like Moscow, Kiev and Sydney and London and New York and Cape Town and some of those big cities now in Barcelona and then we have place called Constance in Germany now nobody knows Constance why do we have church Hillsong Church in Constance in Germany because the guy who is a pastor of the church he lives in Germany that's what I mean when I say you can go to the small place and you can start revival in that place. You can go to the small village and you can start revival in that village because the revival I'm talking about, it is inside of you. It's not around you. So stop running from place to place just asking and seeking for revival. If that revival is not happening inside of you, do anything possible to get that fire in your life, to get that that revival come on somebody <laughs> number two number two when you are fully awake for God's revival it changes your behavior have you noticed people who get in fire for God they are totally changed you know that today is what uh, January 26 and usually by the end of the year we are doing those res resolutions. Anybody doing New Year's resolutions? Come on, somebody. Come on, guys. Let's be honest. 95% of those resolutions never happens. <laughs> well, at least in Russia. Maybe he is different. <laughs> uh, resolution. I'm going to eat well. I'm going to exercise from New Year. I'm going to read my Bible. I'm going to pray. I'm going to cut off sugar. 95 of those percent of those resolutions never happens in our... Uh, come on. Uh, is it only me like that? I made some of those resolutions. Listen, we don't need resolutions. We need revivals in our life. Because when you are fully awake for God's revival, that changes your behavior once and forever. Come on. Once and forever. The behavior of the person is not dependent on the decision of the person most of the time. Your spiritual behavior primarily depends on whether you are spiritually sleeping or spiritually awake. When you are spiritually awake, it changes everything. It changes everything. I pray for every person in this auditorium that you would be spiritually awake in Jesus name because when you are spiritually awake the behavior is gonna change itself when you are spiritually awake that's what gets you up from the uh, at 7 a.m. or 6 a.m. every morning from your bed when you are spiritually awake Come on, turn to someone and say, he's talking to you. He's talking to you right now. <laughs> when you are fully awake for God's revival, it changes your behavior. Number three. When you are fully awake for God's revival, many of your dreams will be about God's house. Many of your dreams will be about God's house in that story about Jacob. In verse 22, it says this, And this stone, which I have set as a pillar, shall be God's house. Jacob starts to dream about God's house. Jacob starts to dream about the, you know, the beauty of that place, the beauty of that house. When I came to Jesus, I was playing in heavy metal rock band. And all my ideas and all my dreams were one day to have a drum kit for our band. Really good drum kit. And you know what? When I got saved, I get full of the Holy Ghost. I was spiritually awake. And suddenly, I'm not talking about the drum kit for my heavy metal band. But I'm talking about the drum kit for my church. Totally changed. Absolutely. Suddenly you start thinking about what can you do in church? What can you do here? What can you do in this ministry? I think my wife and I, we've been in every possible ministry in our church. Not because they kick us out from the ministry to ministry. No, no, no. Not, not like that. Because we were 
busy all the time. We wanted to serve and we were dreaming about God's house in our own life. Anybody understands what I'm talking about? When you are spiritually awake, you can see need after need after need after, and you respond, and you respond, and you respond. That's what happens when you get spiritually awake in your own life. Oh my goodness, I pray that you would be spiritually awake tonight. Because you know what? Revival is not going to start with these folks. Revival is going to start with all of these folks. That's when revival is going to start. Come on, church. Number four. Number f You're not going to like number four, so I'm just going to jump to number five straight away. Or oh, you want number four? You want number four? Sure. Your fault. You wanted it. When you are fully awake for God's revival, you stop questioning money issues. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, when you start to think and dream about the church, when you start to think and dream about salvation, there is no question about money anymore. You understand, uh, you understand that you're going to invest your tithes and offerings and your tithes and offerings are going to go for salvation of this earth. You stop questioning money issue. Come on, guys. It says in verse 22, And this stone which I have set as a pillar shall be God's house. And listen to this. And of all you give me, I will surely give a tenth to you. Now, my favorite word in this passage of scripture is surely. It's like, no question. Sure. Tyson, no question. Offerings, no question. Building fund, freedom for our future, no question. I understand that. I agree with that. I participate with my life, with my family. Surely, come on guys, let's say together, surely. surely. When Pastor Dan or Pastor Luke would come and they would encourage us to give our Tyson offerings, don't just clap like that. Say surely! I cannot wait! Oh, not again. Oh, it's that Tyson offering time. Listen, when you are fully awake for God's revival, you stop questioning money issue. I hear preachers often say that people need revelation about giving. What if they never get this revelation? I believe what people need, they don't need revelation, they need revival. And when they get revival, they will get that revelation in their own lives. Surely, surely I give my thanks to you. No problem. There is a guy in the Bible, his name is Zacchaeus. He was a tax collector and he was not probably a nice guy. And Jesus one day, he said to him, I need to go to your place and have a dinner at your home. In Luke chapter 19, verse 8, it says this. Zacchaeus just stood there a little stunned. <laughs> Not because he said, oh my goodness, how much it's going to cost me. No, no, no. <laughs> Not because of that. He stammered apologetically. Master, I give away. Now listen to this. His first words when he got revelation and revival in his own life. Master, I give away. Listen. Half of my income to the poor. And if I'm caught cheating, I pay four times the damages. Now, this guy never had a problem. He had surely. Of course, he got revival. He got revelation. He said, I give away. I pay. That's what happens when you get revival in your own life and in your own family. I, surely, no problem. No problem. Are you guys with me? Yes. I believe when you are fully awake for God's revival, you stop. You know, people sometimes they arguing, is it Old Testament or is it New Testament, tithes and offering and all of that. Just get revival in your own life. And you will surely understand that it's going to take some money 
to send those teachers to the places to start the churches like you guys did 20 years ago. It takes money for evangelists and pastors and teachers and, uh, and all of these guys to come and start the church and to run the church. It takes money to build beautiful buildings like this. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, I'm so jealous about this building. I want to just pick it up and take it with me to Kiev. Hallelujah. <laughs> and pastors are talking about three next years. And of course, surely, we all going to participate. We all understand. Are you following me, guys? Yes. Number five. I got 17 more points. I'm, I'm going to be good. <laughs> I really like number five. When you are fully awake for God's revival, you will exalt the bride of Christ and not criticize Him. You will exalt the bride of Christ and not criticize Him. In verse 17, it says this, And he was afraid and he said, How awesome is this place! Guys, we need to have the same attitude. When we come to church, how awesome is this place? How awesome is this church? Yes, we are not perfect, but our attitude should be, how awesome is this place? When we got the altar call of people, how awesome is this place? Not just sit there and criticize, oh, the music was too loud today. Or maybe something, the light is too bright. Or they play this hill song, people. Just for young people. No, no, no. Let's stop criticize the bride of Christ. Let's exalt the bride of Christ. When you are fully awake for God's revival, you stop criticizing her and you are exalting the bride of Christ. Listen, <laughs> criticizing God's church is the same as like telling him, God, God, I like you, but your wife, I cannot really stand. <laughs> hmm? That's his bride. That's his bride. Anytime we are criticizing the church. Now, listen. <laughs> we, we, are, we are pastors of a large church in Ukraine and Russia. And sometimes we get critics saying something about us and something about our church. And it's, it's interesting when they talking badly about me, I'm like enjoying this, you know, like when critics say something really bad, I almost want to put it on Twitter. And it's like saying, look what they say about us. That's when they talk about me. But one thing, when they are talking about me badly, but let me tell you, it's totally another thing when they are talking badly about my wife as a pastor of the church. When they are talking, you, you know, I'm this small man. I am small Russian man, but I have a lion's heart. <laughs> you can talk badly about me, but don't you dare. Is it frightful enough? Don't you dare. Talk badly about my wife. I get KGB, I get FBI, I get CIA, I get IBM, I get BMW, I get YMCA, but I will hunt you down in Jesus' name. If you talk badly about you, you can talk badly about me, but don't you dare talk badly about my wife. She's my bride. Come on, you can clap much better than this. Come on, guys. Let's make decision. Never talk badly about the church, the bride of Christ. She is his bride. When you are fully awake for God's revival, you will exalt the bride of Christ. Let's, let's have the same attitude as Jacob had. How awesome is this place? How awesome. Do you know how many 
millions and billions of people would like to have what you guys have in San Bernardino? How awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. How awesome. And yes, maybe sometimes the temperature is not fine and music is not loud enough or too loud or I don't know. How awesome is this place? I don't, I don't believe any church is perfect while we are here on this earth. None of us are perfect. I'm thinking about our church. Few thousands of people who are meeting in a tent. When it's minus 20 outside, guess what? It's minus 20 inside. <laughs> and people are coming three, four hours before the first service and they bring those big gas heaters, like huge gas heaters, and they are warming up the place. So when we start the church service on 10 o'clock, people would come through those doors of that tent and they would say, how awesome is this place? <laughs> no, it's a, it's a tent! What are you talking about? It's a tent! It's like a circus tent. It's ugly. But our attitude, when we see people get saved, how awesome is this place? <laughs> you know, I need to sometimes remind, remind it to myself as a pastor, because I hate that tent. It's ugly, it's cold, it's very expensive. But I need to develop this attitude in my people. How awesome is this church? How awesome is this place? Number six, my last point. My last point. Your revival is your responsibility. <coughs> Did you hear me? Your revival is your response. Sometimes we are thinking, oh, my revival depends on the teaching of the pastor. No, it's not. Oh, my revival depends on how good the music is, how spiritual the dancing is in church. <laughs> and people are looking for those things in life, but they forget the main thing, my revival is my responsibility. I cannot blame pastor. I cannot blame guys like Dan and Luke and the leadership team. I cannot blame anybody for my personal revival if I don't have it. My personal revival is my responsibility. Listen to this in verse 16. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place and I did not know it. See, he puts responsibility on I. The Lord is in this place and I did not know it. That's my responsibility. My responsibility to understand where revival is. How revival works in my own life. In James chapter 4 verse 8 it says this. Come close to God and God will come close to you. But listen, first of all, you come close to God. It's your responsibility to come to the place of revival, to come to the attitude of revival. Come close to God. Don't sit and wait. Oh, God, come, come. I'm going to just sit here. No, no, no. It's your responsibility. Come close to God and then God will come close to you. Your revival is your responsibility. God is doing something special today in this church. And we can see it and just watch or we can take responsibility on our own shoulders 
and we can say, I want to experience God's revival in this church. I really believe this church is in the edge of revival right now. But this revival is going to depend on everyone in this auditorium. Father God, I thank you for this church. I thank you for pastors in this church. I thank you for leadership in this church. I thank you for every member in this church. In Jesus' name, Father God, I ask your blessing. And I ask, Father God, open our eyes. Father God, awake us. Give us awakening. Give us your move of the Lord. Give us, give us this revival in our own lives. We don't want to be sleepy anymore. We want to be awake to see what you are doing in this city and in other cities around us. We want to see the influence of this church, the influence of this house in Jesus' name. Father God, we want to exalt the bride of Christ and not criticize her. And if we criticize her, Father God, forgive us, please. We did something, maybe we did not understand what we were doing. But now, from now on, we want to exalt your church. We want to exalt your pride. We want to say great stuff. We want to say how awesome is this place. Father God, I pray that we would, we would put away the money issue. Put it away. And every one of us would make decision. Surely, surely I'm going to support. Surely I'm going to invest in this house in jesus mighty name amen and amen and amen thank you so much fantastic let's bow down our heads for a few minutes i want to talk to you in this last portion of our service about your personal relationship with the lord jesus christ maybe you are here in this auditorium for the first time I just want to say, Jesus changed my life. He gave me salvation. He gave me an amazing future. He gave me eternal life with Him in heaven. And right now I want to talk to you about your personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Right now where you're sitting, I'm just interested. Maybe you came here for the first time. Maybe you've been coming here to this church for quite some time. But you never accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. See, many people, when they live in Christian culture, they don't understand that they need to receive Jesus personally. I was like that. I remember back in 1991, 92, that big monster called Soviet Union has collapsed. And those pastors and teachers and evangelists started to come to our country. And one of those group of people were people from Sydney, Australia. And when they came, they started to tell us about Jesus and about personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. But I was not interested. I was just interested because they said to us, we're gonna, we need musicians and singers, so we're going to pay you a few dollars to play for our church services. But I was so far away from the Lord. I did not know the Lord Jesus Christ myself. And yet I thought, I am okay with God. Because, you know, sometimes you go to church, you come to church twice a year for Easter and for Christmas. And then when these guys started the church, somehow the pastor started to talk about your personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I was playing on the stage on my bass guitar and I was not saved. For about two months I was doing this. And during the message, as you would understand, I was not interested in the message of Jesus. I would go down to the bar, we were renting this movie theater. And I would go during the message, during 40 minutes message or 45 minutes, I would go down to the bar, smoke cigarette, drink vodka, and would go back to play for that thing called altar call. High in spirits. Hallelujah. <laughs> and then one day, about two months later, it hits me. Suddenly I understood I need to receive Jesus. Because I heard those words from Romans chapter 10, verse... 9. If you believe in your heart and if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you will 
be saved. And right now I want to pray for those of you guys. Maybe you've been coming to this church. But now, man, maybe you believe in your heart. But you never confess with your own mouth that Jesus is Lord. I want to pray this prayer. And right now I want everybody to bow down our heads and close our eyes. If that's you, if you are saying, Pastor, please pray for me. See, I had to come to the realization I need Jesus myself. And November morning, that November morning of 1992, my wife and I, after becoming to church, coming to church for about two or two and a half months, we came to our pastors and we said, when are we going to do this? And he said, Zhenya, what do you want to do? I said, give my heart to Jesus. Because every time during the altar call, when people would come to the altar, I was standing and playing my bass guitar. Never had a chance to come down to receive Christ into my heart. And pastor said, you can pray right now. See, it took me two months to realize I need personal relationship with Jesus. And I prayed that that prayer of salvation, my life changed. I went to Bible college. Three and a half years later, or four years later, I became a pastor of that same church. My life completely changed. And maybe you are not called to be a pastor, but I'm talking about your personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Right now, as I'm speaking, I'm going to count to three. And when I say one, two, and when I say three, I want all of you who wants to receive Jesus into your own heart, just simply raise your hand nice and high so I can see your hand. And when you raise your hand, we're all going to pray together. Ready? One, two, three. Come on, guys, raise your hand. If you need Jesus, just raise your hand. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I can see so many hands. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Another hand right here. Who else? Don't be shy. Don't be, don't be worried. If you need to accept Jesus, thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Another hand right here. Thank you. Another hand right here. Amazing. Hallelujah. Who else? Who else? Don't stop. If you need Jesus, don't be shy. Just make a bold step of faith and raise your hand right now. I'm not going to put more pressure. Another two hands. Thank you guys so much. I'm not going to put any more pressure. If you need this prayer right now, raise your hand hallelujah hallelujah come on guys let's give those people bigger round of applause i saw about 15 hands tonight hallelujah amazing amazing can we all please stand up let's stand up everyone if you raise your hand can i ask you to do something else make a bold step of faith Come down from the seats and stand right here so we can all pray with you and for you. If you raise your hand, just come down from your seat, make your way down here, and we're all going to pray together. Come on, guys. If you raise your hand, just come down here. Come, 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 guys, come, come, come. Come on, church. Let's thank these guys. Let's thank these folks. Come, come. come maybe you raise your hand and uh, and you don't want to come change your mind just come come we're all gonna pray together thank you so much come come hallelujah hallelujah come on church let's let's thank these folks one more time amen 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 fantastic thank you so much for making this bold step of faith. I want to pray with you and the whole church is going to pray with us. If you want, you can close your eyes because you are not praying to me. We are praying to our Father in heaven. Some more people are coming. Let's wait for them. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you, guys. Fantastic. 
Uh, I love this! How awesome is this place? <laughs> Let's all pray. But make this prayer from your own heart. Let's all pray and the whole congregation is going to help us to pray. Repeat after me. Dear Jesus, I come to you and I want to recognize I am a sinner. Right now, Jesus, come into my life. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. I thank you for dying for me on that cross 2,000 years ago. And I believe you are in my heart. You are my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, help me. Help me to build my life on the Word of God. Help me to love your church. Help me to love heaven. And help me to love your people. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. So good, guys. So good. Come on. Let's give big round of applause to our Lord Jesus Christ for salvation in this place. Pastor Luke is going to tell you what to do next. But can I say this? I am proud of you guys. I am proud of you. We are all proud of you. You are amazing. You are amazing. Be blessed. Hey, guys, congratulations. Listen, the best decision you ever will make right now today here's what i want to do i want to introduce a friend of mine to you see this see this guy right over here waving at you his name is pastor joel pastor joel is going to take you guys right over there listen nothing weird goes on i promise what we want to do is we want to get some information and literature into your hands you see you made a commitment you're going to walk out of this place and say what do i do next we want to point you in the right direction help get you into the right direction the second thing pastor joel is going to do is he's going to give away a friend we give friends away here at the church we call them spiritual personal trainers you know you go Go to the gym and you get a personal trainer. Make sure you're using that equipment the right way and that you don't waste your time. We give away friends here at the church. They're called spiritual personal trainers. Somebody that will meet with you right before church. They'll buy you a cup of coffee, teach you some things of the Word of God for a couple of weeks to get you strong in the ways of God so that you don't go back to the life that you came with. And of course, they're always going to offer to pray with you and pray for you as you go back there. So would you go to your left, my right, right over there and go with Pastor Joel. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Hey, you just heard that altar call. You just wanted to give God all of your heart and all of your life. Now let me lead you simply in a prayer of inviting Jesus Christ into your heart as your Lord and Savior. In fact, why don't you just go ahead and listen to me and go ahead and close your eyes and just repeat these words after me. I'll go slow. You repeat them. Say these words. Say, Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I believe that Jesus Christ is your only begotten Son and that you sent Him for me and that He died for me on that cross at Calvary. I believe that His blood washes away my sins, that I am now a new creature in Christ Jesus. And I thank you, Lord. I receive you now and forever as my Lord and as my Savior. I'm going to turn from sin and I'm going to turn with all of my heart and all of my life to you, Jesus, as my Lord and as my Savior. Let it be known in heaven as well as upon the earth that I am born again. I'm a child of God, that I'm saved, and I'm headed for heaven and denying my presence in hell. Thank you, Jesus. I'm alive forevermore. Love you so much. God bless you guys. Everybody just say amen and receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. So talk to you later. God bless you. Bye-bye.